Hello, and welcome to St. Mark Lutheran Church. We enter into our weekly devotions this night, preparing ourselves to hear another I am statement of Jesus. Tonight we hear Jesus say in John chapter 15, I am the vine, you are the branches. Let us prepare ourselves, opening ourselves up to the word of God as we prepare with a moment of silence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its seasons and their leaves do not wither. In all they do, they prosper. Let us now come before the Lord, making our confession, asking for forgiveness of our sins, and seeking his forgiveness. Let us make confession. Almighty God, we are joined by faith to Christ, the true vine, Yet we often seek to find other sources of life for ourselves. We follow our own sinful desires and pursue the temptations offered by the world around us. Have mercy on us and forgive us. Lead us to follow your Holy Son and to know him as our only connection and stem of life. God has indeed had mercy on us. He sent his Son to be the vine that we may be connected to our Lord forever. By his gift of reconciliation, we are given mercy and a place with God forever. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I announce to you all your forgiveness of sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called, The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is taken from Colossians, the second chapter. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught abounding in thanksgiving See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And a gospel reading from the Gospel of John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered 
thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Praise and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the ears of our hearts be open to the word of God this day. Amen. So how are you growing plants? Today we hear about an image of a vine, of a plant that grows. Some people have green thumbs and some black thumbs. Some people can grow things. They can put them in the ground, nourish them, take care of them, water them, and they grow and they thrive. Some, like myself, have really bad growing experience. We plant plants and they don't thrive. They don't grow, they're not nourished, and they die. But some people have the green thumbs, and today we hear in our reading about the one that has the greenest, the greatest gift. Jesus compares himself and says, I am the vine, and God is the vine grower, the vine dresser, the one who tends to the vine and connects with the vine. And we are the branches connected through Jesus to that farmer, to that vine grower, to God. Throughout the Old Testament, God is used as an image as a farmer, that image of the farmer that goes out to tend his fields. It goes all the way back to the very beginning. God made creation and set up a garden where everything was provided for humanity. God was the one who took care of us and provided. He nourished us. He provided everything we need, and we reject it. Throughout the Old Testament, we get other images of how God calls his people to follow him. In Psalm 80, you get... You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. The psalmist is saying, back at the time of Moses, you brought us out from death. You chopped us off from Egypt and planted us in a new fertile soil where we could grow as a nation and become a people. Throughout the psalms, we get images of God being that one who plants a garden, puts a fence around it, puts in a watchtower and a wine press and protects it and guides it. And throughout it all, God is always providing. And yet, over and over again, we get an image of people that abuse that farm, abuse the garden, they reject it. Even in the time of Moses, they came out of Egypt. They were made a nation, mighty indeed. And yet they turned away. They followed false gods, rejected God, and sinned. And over and over again, God comes to them and reconnects with them, planning a new message, a new word into their hearts to bring them back, to once again reconnect with them. Until finally he sends Jesus, the one who is the vine, who connects us for once and for all to God. There's a reason I'm down here today I'm at the stage in the fellowship hall. Behind me is a lectern and a pulpit, an altar, some chancel chairs, the baptismal font that all came from St. Paul's in McSherry's town. This is their chancel furniture. This is the furniture they worshiped God from. But they have been replanted with us here at St. Mark. They have been grafted to the vine and attached Really, St. Mark's, if you think about it, was also planted from another root, regrafted into the body of God, a new branch that broke off of St. Matthew's back in the 1800s. And through St. Matthew's, we connect back to a bigger vine that goes back before St. Matthew's to an early church that came to the New World, to preachers who came over from Germany 
from Norway and Sweden who came to preach the word and begin churches here, one like St. Matthew's, which eventually would give birth to one like St. Mark, which would also connect to St. Paul, McSherry's town. But we also follow that line all the way back into Norway, into Sweden, into Switzerland, into Germany, all the way back through time, a branch that follows like a vine to Christ himself, to the word, to the one who gives us the connection with God. Jesus comes into the world as a new branch, fulfilling that word of the Old Testament that said a branch of Jesse, a stump of Jesse shall bring forth to reconnect the people to God's salvation. Jesus is that one. We are grafted to his vine. He is the vine. When he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He's the one that nourishes us, sustains us, gives us life. Just like he connects St. Paul's, St. Mark, St. Matthew's, churches of Europe, churches all the way back to Jesus, all connected through as branches, connected to that one vine. Jesus connects us to God once and for all time. He is the vine. We are the branches. May we stay connected to God this Lent. May we seek to be nourished, to grow new fruit and flourish, growing forth as God's branches, calling others to graft to that vine also, seeking to always stay with God through Jesus Christ, who is our vine, for we are his branches. Amen. Let us now pray to God, our Father and our Lord, for the world, for our church, and for all those in need. Let us pray. Lord, you are the true vine. In perfect obedience to your Father, you laid down your life on the cross to save us. Through your resurrection, we have the hope of eternal life. Nourish and sustain us with your word and with your body and blood, so that we may bear fruit to the glory of God the Father. Jesus, our true vine, may we abide in you and bear the fruit of love. God, when times of sorrow and trouble arise, help us to remain faithful, knowing that in such times the Father prunes and trims the faithful branches so that they may bear even more fruit Prune us of all that would keep us from walking in your ways and doing the good you lay before us. Make us a flourishing branch of your vine here and now. Jesus, our true vine, may we abide in you and bear the fruit of love. Almighty Lord, lead us by your Spirit to share the good news of salvation found only through faith in your name. We pray that more and more fruit-bearing branches will be grafted into you, the righteous branch of the Father. Help us to do your work and praise your name here at St. Mark as one part of your greater vine throughout the world. Jesus, our true vine, may we abide in you and hear the fruit of love. Healing God, continue to give strength to all those who call out to you in need this day. Help them feel your peace and know of your salvation. Connect them by your spirit and give them your comfort. We especially pray for all those who suffer from sickness and pain and for all those we lift up in our prayers to you now. Jesus, our true vine, may we abide in you and bear the fruit of love. Heavenly Father, we connect to you through your Son, Jesus, and we ask that by your Spirit you may continue to grow the faith in us and guide us in our journey of Lent. We pray all these things in your Son's name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them will bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Help us bear fruit worthy of your glory, so that by it we may glorify the Father who is in heaven. Abide in the Lord, and may we bear fruit worthy of the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.